Hi everybody, it's just me LTM. I have another unboxing today. You know I have a few knitting machines. Now I have another one as well. This is a Centro 32 needle machine. So it's in between the 22 needle Addy and the 46 needle Addy that I have. I also have a 48 needle Centro and just finding particularly I've got this one to make head warmers with because the head warmers on the 46 and the 48 needle machine are too wide and on the 22 needle machine they're just that little bit too narrow. So yes, I have yet another knitting machine. I'm making very good use of them though so I don't feel bad about this whatsoever. It's going to help me use up my yarn stash so all good. If you're interested to see what's in the box when you buy one of these, hang around and let's have a look. Okay, let's open her up. Hmm. As you can see, the box is a little bit damaged on this corner, so hopefully that means Everything like inside is okay because it does just seem to be on the corner. Mm, box is a bit bashed up down here as well. See there's a dent in the box here. Bottom seems okay. And this dent in the corner, as I mentioned earlier. Ooh. <laughs> and yarn has popped off with the lid. Stuck to the lid. So some grey yarn. light grey and some dark grey. Some white. Oh, there's the band for the grey. And some pink. Alright, let's tip this box <coughs> on so you can see what's in here. So here we have a bag of bits and bobs. There is a tensioner, which I'm familiar with from the other Centro machine. So here's the tension arm. And then, as usual, there is a crochet hook and also some yarn needles. Pretty standard fare. Also seems to be a block of rubber foam or something. I'm not sure what that's for. And we have the suction cups for the feet. Instruction booklet. I'll have a look in a minute. Here we have the top of the machine. This lid is the reason why it's often called a mushroom knitting machine. I do see some people using the machine with the lid on, but I also see the machine only, sorry, the lid only being used on the machine when it's not being used. And so here is the machine. I'm noticing it's very flat on the bottom and here are the spots for the suction cups to go in. As you can see I have a cutting mat on my working surface at the moment and I'm thinking that the suction cups would stick really well to that. Gosh, even just with my arm next to it I can feel there's a lot of static in this plastic. It's making the hairs on my arms stand on end. And they fit into these slots. Now on my previous Centro machine, I had to warm up my suction cups in hot water to be able to put them on. Oh, these ones are going on really easily though. So as with all these machines, there is a switch here to change from panel knitting, which is squares or rectangles, to and switch over to tubular knitting, which is knitting in the round like you would with 
for double pointed knitting needles, DPNS, or uh, circular needles even. Here is the yarn guide for this machine and the tensioner needs to be attached. So let's do that right now. And I have seen two different ways of putting a tensioner in, that way or that way. And I'm not really sure which is the right way around. I know which way I put it in my other machine, but let's just check the documents and see which way the manufacturer says the tensioner should go. So I'm thinking it goes this way. And actually, I think that's upside down now. And the reason why I think it's upside down is this little button needs to be at the top so that if the if there is a knot in the yarn this will pop up and see how this goes in it's less likely to break the tension arm if there's a knot in the yarn could put it the other way but I think this way is likely to last longer and here at the top we have the first needle. The needles are all numbered and indeed that is the number one needle. Here is the handle. I do find the handle, let's turn that around so I can see it a bit better in profile. I find the handles on the Centro is much easier to use than the handles on the Addy. So the Addy has quite a large fat round handle. You can see the, the Addy handle. This is not that comfortable to hold as you're turning the machine. This part here, I certainly find this style handle much easier to operate. Okay. And although I was fairly certain that I ordered this from the Centro website, I noticed that it has this unusual brand name on it. So it looks set to go. The suction cups do seem to be sticking fairly well to this surface. So I'm going to load up some of this yarn that came with the machine. Just see how that pops on the top. Oh yeah. So here it is with its lid on. I'm going to use some of the uh, yarn that came with the machine. I'll just use this grey since the label's already fallen off it and I'll just use this through the machine to see how it goes. I have made sure that the machine is in tubular mode and here is the yarn that I'm going to use. It's just the grey yarn that came with the machine. I'm going to do just a very standard cast on and see how we go. So normal cast on is one in front and one behind. I see a lot of people new to these machines saying that they have a disaster on their first turn and it's because they haven't done this zigzaggy cast on. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing, maybe casting on in front of all of the needles, but it definitely needs to be in front behind, in front behind. And my machine's moving around a little bit, so let me just make sure it's firmly on the table. And because these machines have an even number of needles, when you get back to the beginning, you'll know whether you've done your casting on right, because, see, the beginning one is under the needle, and this last one is behind the needle, so that's correct. Now, make sure, too, when you put your yarn in the yarn holder, hmm, this one's quite thin, that it does go all the way down in here. So what I was saying just then is, make sure that this yarn is underneath this first white needle, needle number one, and see it is behind this last needle, number 32. And then make sure you're using the tension arm. I'm going to have a try with the middle tension hole. There are three tension holes, but there's more than three ways of tensioning the yarn, because for a really tight tension, you can loop it through so it's kind of in both the first and the last holes 
and loop through underneath. So that's an even tighter tension than just the tightest tension, which is the smallest hole closest to the machine. Uh, but I'm going to go for the middle tension today and see how we go with that. Okay, so the first round's gone through quite well. You'll notice this machine doesn't have a counter, so yep, no counter with these, that's how they come. Plenty of counters you can purchase online and attach to the machine, and if you search YouTube, you'll find plenty of YouTube videos showing you how to do that and recommending various counters. I don't have one at the moment, so I can't make a recommendation to you. So now I'm going to crank faster. Just needing to stop now and then to release more yarn from the ball. You really want your yarn coming up very loosely from the ball. You don't want it to be tight coming out of the ball at all. So far there haven't been any dropped stitches so that's really good. I'm definitely finding that I'm wanting to hold the machine, which is a bit of a shame. It does seem to wobble, even though the um, suction cups, even though the suction cups seem to be reasonably well. Hmm, maybe I wasn't right about that. So the suction cups are perhaps not sticking to this mat as well as I thought that they would. Actually, I might give it a try with um, the mat off the table. Let's give it a whirl attached directly to the bench. Mm, wobbling all over the place, worse than before. Wow. There's a huge amount of static in there. Put my hand in there, I can just feel it. I really haven't noticed that with my Centro or my Addy machines. So it seems to have done a, uh, a pretty good job, really. Uh, no complaints here. It's it's much quieter than my other Centro, I guess because it doesn't have a counter, so you're not getting that loud click noise um, whenever you go past the first needle. So um, it's quieter from that perspective. Certainly the knitting on the machine seems to be perfectly fine. Again, I'm really surprised at the amount of static in there, but that just could be this particular yarn. It could be the particular temperature for today. You know what it's like in my house today, so that's not anything to do necessarily with the machine. So I'm just going to take this off the machine now. First couple of stitches are always a bit tricky to take off because it's a bit tight on the machine but then after the first few you should be able to do a number of stitches at a time. Like this.
I'll just do a bit of a close-up because some people ask exactly where do they pick up the stitches from when they're casting off or picking up their work off the machine. Okay, so you pick up in between the two pegs. You can see there's two little teeth there, pegs. So you push your needle in between and put it through the yarn so that that stitch gets threaded onto your cast off yarn. So again between the two teeth, so here's my needle between those two teeth or pegs and pick up the stitch. Now all these stitches are being held on this yarn. So a few more to go. And that one is the last one. So that's all the work picked up off the stitch, off the needles. Just set the machine aside for a minute and have a look at what we've created. It's always important to stretch your work when you take it off the machine because it makes the stitches a more consistent shape. Sometimes the stitches will look a bit squarish when you first take it off the machine but when you give it a stretch lengthwise then you'll see the stitches start become more v-shaped. So I'm thinking that is a really good width for a headband which is specifically what I have bought this machine to do. Um, this is just the dark grey yarn that came with the machine. The stitching seems quite even. The stitches are quite even. Uh, even though I was having some challenges with the machine, moved it a couple of times. Often when you do that kind of a thing you will see a line through the work where you've changed your tension but that's not obvious in this. So there is the Centro 32 needle circular knitting machine. Everything that you We'll get in the box with it and yeah it seems like a pretty good machine I'm happy with that purchase and hopefully I can now get on and make a whole heap of head warmers to match the beanies and scarves that I make if you like this video please hit the like button it tells YouTube this is the kind of content that you want and YouTube will suggest more of it to you not necessarily from me but similar topics so hit the like button Thanks for watching today and I'll see you next time. Bye.